today we're going to go over my two favorite swing trading strategies that I'm already using in 2021. We're going to discuss how to do swing trading for beginners using moving average crossovers and open interest momentum changes. If you use these swing trading strategies in combination, you'll have a great chance of becoming a profitable trader. Remember to like this video and subscribe so that you don't miss out on all the new content that I'll be releasing. The first swing trading strategy for beginners is what I call the moving average momentum strategy or the moving average crossover strategy. There are two types of moving averages commonly used in swing trading, there's SMA, which is simple moving average, and EMA, exponential moving average. They both show you the average price over a certain period of time, while SMA just shows you the exact moving price waiting every day the same over a period of time. EMA gives more weight to recent price changes and therefore is more responsive. For this reason, EMA is typically better used for day trading and SMA is a little bit more preferable for longer term trading such as swing trading or investing. This is because it lags behind a little bit, but it also therefore gives less false breakouts. For this swing trading strategy in 2021, we're going to be using the 50 day SMA and the 200 day SMA. For example, let's just consider a stock that's been in a long term downtrend. Due to this trend, the 50 day SMA or simple moving average will be below the 200 day simple moving average. A moving average crossover on this stock will occur when the 50 day SMA crosses the 200 day SMA from below to above. So as you can see, we have the 50 day moving average in blue and the 200 day moving average in black. Now you see the 50 day crossing above at this point here. And this is really what we're looking for in terms of a swing trade to get in long. So when this happens, it's a pretty good indication that the negative sentiment attached to that particular stock is now switching to positive sentiment and possibly a new uptrend. Now this happens because the 50 day SMA is reflecting more current price action, whereas the 200 day is still lagging behind. So let's look at an example. So for this example, we're going to be looking at Netflix and it's around March of 2019 if you want to follow along. So I have my 50 day SMA in gold here and I have my 200 day SMA in blue. So what we're looking for is the crossover. So as soon as we get the crossover, you'll notice we get a big jump up. In just eight days, we get a six, almost a 7% move, okay? So one thing to keep in mind is this is just one indicator, but when you use it in combination with other indicators, you'll just have more confidence going in. So one other thing you need to know, when a rally is going to continue to rise up, the volume has to maintain or increase along with it. So let's check if that's happening. I have my volume down here. We'll zoom in a little bit. We get the cross and we're already in a little bit of an uptrend. Well, what's happening to the volume? Uh, on the first day, it pulls back a little bit, but then we get increased volume for multiple days over that. So we're looking at the average volume before this, right? Before the uptrend starts. And then by the third or fourth day, we're already up to a 50% increase in volume, which is massive for a stock that's trading millions and millions of shares per day. One thing to also notice is that when we did get the crossover, the volume immediately shot up. This is because people are looking for this pattern. Big hedge funds and experienced traders know about these crossovers. So you'll often see an increase in volume which will further confirm the trend. So number two on my list of best swing trading strategies for beginners is a little bit more advanced, but I'm going to make it super simple. Now this is called open interest momentum shift. We'll need just a simple definition of options for beginners in order to understand the strategy. Now options do sort of get a bad rap because oftentimes people just use them to gamble on very risky positions. If used properly, however, we can gain a ton of information by looking at option chains 
So it's really worth the time to get a brief understanding of them. So first, let's just go over what is a stock option. A stock option gives an investor the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell a stock at an agreed upon price and date. There are two types of options, puts, which profit if a stock falls, or calls, which profit if a stock rises. Now, open interest, which is what we're going to be using for this strategy, is the total number of contracts existing for one stock with one expiration date at one strike price. Now, I'll make an in-depth video on options if there's enough interest, so comment below. If more than, say, 20 people uh, comment below requesting a video on options, I'll make an in-depth series. So let's say there is a call option for Tesla expiring in one month. If there are 20 people currently holding that position, then the open interest would be 20. So let's say five of those people sell their call to close the position, then the open interest would go down to 15, which just means there are still 15 people holding calls on Tesla for that date and that strike price, meaning they still think that Tesla is going to go up more and that call is going to be more profitable. When a lot of people start closing their position in calls, it's a good indicator that the sentiment is likely turning to negative on that stock and the upward rally might be starting to shift to a downward rally. This can help predict a trend change, which for swing trading strategies are often the most profitable. Now, don't worry if you don't understand all the mechanics of this, you can still easily view changes in the trend of open interest using Thinkorswim or any brokerage that you have. So I'll show you what this looks like right now on Thinkorswim. So for this example, let's just look at Tesla quickly, okay? So we have our chart pulled up. To get to the option open interest chain, I'm gonna show you very simply how to do it. Go over to trade. Now for this strategy, make sure you're looking at options with at least 40 days left till expiration. This is because open interest, when an option gets very close to expiring, will naturally go down because people are just closing out their positions. It might not show any indication of trend reversal, right? So let's go here. In the brackets, we have our days to expiration. So let's look at a 44 day to expiration option. Click this arrow to open it up. On the left side is our calls. Don't get confused. This is actually very simple. What you want to look at is just a number that is close to where Tesla is right now or whatever stock is, is close to that, right? So we're at 845, let's look at 850. Round numbers like 850, 875, 900 will get more volume, so you'll get a more accurate reading. So in order to analyze the option, I'm going to go over to the ask on 850, right click, and then just click copy. Then we go back to our chart and we're going to paste that in. And you'll get something like this. So first you'll probably have to add the open interest indicator. To do that, just go to studies, edit studies. I already have mine here. So if you don't have that, just type in open interest, double click, and that will add it onto your, to your chart here, okay? So in blue, we have the open interest, which remember is showing how many people are owning these calls. So if the open interest is uptrending, it's a very positive sign that people are confident in the stock. They're confident that Tesla is going to continue to rise because more and more people are buying options, right? So we're gonna look at another example with open interest staying flat or declining and that's going to be an indication that Tesla or this other stock might actually be reversing. So very simple, if you're seeing an uptrend, this is something to just check when you already have other indicators. Check, are people buying calls on this stock? Like, are people confident that the stock will continue to rise? It's a very, very positive sign. Let's look at another example. So for the next example, let's look at Apple. And we're going to actually look at both calls and put open interest in this one to get further confirmation. So we have Apple up on our charts here. Go over to the trade tab. Again, we want something with at least 40 days left till expiration. So we'll go to the same dates. Remember in the brackets, it's showing your days to expiration. So we open that up. We want to go to a number that is 
near the current stock price. So Apple's at 130 right now. We can look at 130 or 131. Let's look at the 130s. To analyze it, remember, you're gonna need to click on the ask, copy this, and then go back to your charts and paste it. So on Mac, it's Command V, Windows, uh, Control V. So again, you get something like this. And what's interesting about the open interest here is that it's starting to flatten out. So this means people are starting to close their positions, right? We have this blue, very simply uptrending pretty aggressively. And then now it's starting to flatten out. So when we see that, we think, okay, people are maybe not so confident in holding their calls. Maybe they don't really believe that Apple is going to continue to appreciate in value. So what we can do here is look at the put side and see if that's actually increasing, meaning more people are trying to short Apple. So we go back to trade and we have to look at the exact same day, but now over here on the put side, we'll show people that have negative sentiment towards Apple. People buy puts when they think the stock price is going to go down. So let's look at the 130 puts. So go over to the ask, same thing. Copy this into your chart. And this is what we get. So this is interesting, right? We had flat open interest, which was starting to decline on the call side, but on the put side, we see pretty aggressive growth. So that's showing you that people who are quote unquote bullish about Apple, people who think Apple is going to go up are actually losing numbers and less people are going long on Apple. And the put side is increasing. So more and more, maybe of those even same investors are shifting over to the put side, meaning they're going short on Apple. So this is very interesting. And if you use it in combination with your moving average momentum uh, crossovers and your RSI divergences and volume analysis and all of these things, it's really the last step that I take before entering a trade is I always, always check out open interest on the stock because it can tell you so much.